Hi everybody, welcome back to another lesson in my level three beginner piano course. In this video, we're going to learn Purcell's Hornpipe ZT683. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and if you like what you see, give this video a thumbs up. Also, I offer online piano lessons. If you're looking for one, there's going to be information below. We've come to another beautiful Baroque era piece, this time by Purcell. This chapter is all about the key of B flat major. So obviously this one is in B flat major too. So we've got two flats, E flat and B flat. The tempo says andante, so kind of walking speed, medium speed, and we are in three, four, so triple time, three quarter note crotchet beats in every bar. Now the articulation is very interesting in this piece. Uh, we've got some slurs, but there is a lot more scope for exploring articulation. There is more than one way to play this. You can use a lot more detached notes, you can use a lot more legato if you wish. What I performed at the start of the video is just one option. The only thing that's really in the score is the short slurs over the second beats in, in each bar. The rhythm is probably the most challenging in this piece. We've got lots of dotted eighths followed by sixteenth notes, so dotted uh, quavers followed by semiquavers, and then sixteen, sixteen, eighth, so uh, semiquavers and quavers. So a lot of different combinations of very short notes and obviously they all have to fall into one beat so we have to really distinguish between the rhythmic patterns. Now the first bar pattern is kind of the one that gets repeated the most often so let's have a look at the right hand rhythm and let's try to clap it out. So we've got three beats. The first one is a long short so tim ri ti ri ti 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 Tim ri ti ri ti ti ti. So we can say Tim for the dotted note and Tiri for the two sixteenth notes and T for the eighth notes or quavers. So once again on the first beat, Tim ri and then second beat, Ti ri ti and Ti ti. Tim ri ti ri ti ti ti. So really practice saying the rhythm or playing it, clapping it to make sure you can really get it. Now let's start with the left hand as it's easier. We're going to start in bar one, so five on the B flat. Again, you can detach some of these notes or play it completely legato. It's up to you, just be careful with the fingering and make sure you count evenly. One, two, three, one, two, cross under, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So, octave and B flat. Going on, bar five. One, two, three, one, two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. A very long eighth note quaver passage here. Again, watch out for the thumb crossing. So starting on the D, one on the A, one on the D, C, A, D, octave, G. Going on, bar nine, E flat, number three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So lots of octaves, and we always do the one five on the octaves. And that's the left hand, so really making sure you memorize it before you start putting it together as it could slow down the right hand transition from bar to bar. Let's see the right hand. So we already dealt with the rhythm, so we're going to start number two on the D, and the first pattern goes like this. And that's our rhythm. Now, articulation-wise, I chose to play the first two beats legato, and the final beat, where we have the two eighth notes or quavers, I detach those to create a rhythmic pattern there. So, connect, detach, 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 and finishing on a B flat. 
So again, very careful with the uh, flats, the E flat and B flat, and also the finger numbers. They keep changing every bar to readjust to the new hand position. In bar four, we have a trill, and this one can be a free trill, or it could be as notated above. First, you should try to play the entire piece without the trills or ornaments, and only put it in when you're very comfortable with the melody. And the best way to do the trill is do four 16th notes of semiquavers on the first beat, sit on the B flat as shown there, a and back to B flat. Let's go on, bar five, up to the B flat, number three, and here we go loud. One, two, detach. Detach. And another trill, we can do it the exact same way, four on the A. So one turn on the G and then down to the F sharp and back to G. Going on to bar nine, we go quiet and we're gonna have a beautiful crescendo as we rise with these sequence of um, rhythmic patterns. Starting on the G number one. Crescendo. And finishing on this beautiful turn. So three, two, three, two, three, two, one, four, to finishing on the B flat. Now again, here we have lots of very short slurs as we rise with this sequence, so we can separate those shorter slurs. But as I said, there's not one single way of playing the articulation. You can phrase it as you wish. So let's put it together now. We're going to go from the start. So left hand starting on the B flat, right hand on the D. One. Two, detach. One, two, detach. Two, detach. And now the trill. Left, right, together. So, left, right, together. So make sure you wait for the dotted quarter note, dotted crotchet. Let's go on. Now loud. One. Detach F sharp, come down the scale, and now the trill is a bit different because we've got two eighth notes or quavers in the left, so, so one, F sharp, G, going on, bar nine, quietly. Crescendo. And the final trill. And there we are at the end. So playing very slowly is going to really help to piece together the right and left hand rhythms. And once you've got that and you have the correct articulation, you can start playing with uh, phrasing and dynamics. Make it very expressive. It's a beautiful piece with lots of rising and falling melodies and the rhythm is really driving it forward. And as I said many times in this video, the articulation and slurring is really up to you. As long as you connect the notes in the second beats of the bars, the rest is up to you, whether you want to play detached for a more percussive effect or legato for a more lyrical effect.